third quarterback this year. That's going great. Uh, Jason <laughs> Witten thinks the Cowboys are just dandy. They're playing at a high level right now, scoring a lot of points. Defensively, not giving up much. They can get to the quarterback. They can cover, play good on special teams. I don't see really any weaknesses in that football team, Brew. I've You've missed seen that some incisive flaws. commentary from Will. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm he sorry. tried his best. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Because no, I don't agree with Jason. Okay. With and I see a ton of weaknesses on and off the field. Now, I'm going to start. I've said this before, but I'm saying it again. The number one weakness is their culture. Okay? Their culture is a soap opera. Their culture is uh, too much drama. Yep. To be frank, it's a bit clownish. Okay, hey. and that culture that was <laughs> no, <laughs> that culture does spread down. It trickles down <laughs> to the players, and it creates just a little bit too much silliness. And look at the top franchises in the NFL. Sure, Pittsburgh, New England. San Francisco, Baltimore, Green Bay. Green Bay, of course, Aaron Rodgers, but coming from management, coming from ownership, right. do you ever see mess like this anywhere else but Dallas? Oh, maybe the Raiders. Okay, they're not very good either. Even now, Rick, Kansas City, Buffalo, some of the teams that are really good, you don't see this. There is a – their culture is not, in my view, conducive to winning huge. And then on the field, they got some issues as well. They're not just – they're more style than substance. Here's the issues on the field. Dak, I like him, but he's got – he leads the league in interceptions and he missed – he's played 11 games. Mm -hmm. All right, the run defense. Get this, guys. Tampa Bay, you know how bad Tampa Bay's run defense is. The first game of the season when they beat Dallas, they ran 452 yards. Oh, how bad Tampa's run offense is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. run offense. Yep. Yeah, they ran 452 yards against Dallas. That's bad. Goal to go. We know okay. the red zone. I mean, it's beyond yeah. red zone. Goal to go. They, they can't stop anybody once they get in the 10-yard line. And then the penalty Can I say, you make, I, I suppose, a, great a compelling case. Yeah, really good. I think you are way too down on the Cowboys. Now, this is, I'm in a weird spot because I agree, and by agree, I mean I've been saying for a month that Tampa is destined to go on some very annoying playoff run, and that would almost assuredly mean they beat Dallas. However, I think one could make a very compelling argument that of all the NFC contenders, the Cowboys have the least glaring weaknesses. Now, the reason I'm not picking them is I also think they don't have a singular strength like the San Francisco defense well, sorry. or well, the defense. I mean, the rush, the, pass rush, no, the pass defense. No, I, I, but I think the San Rushing Francisco game. defense is better. Yeah. I think the magical pixie dust of Brady is more is impactful. Oh, we I, I'm, well, I, listen, I've just seen it the for dream, two decades. Of course, yeah. It doesn't matter. The point is this. I think for the Cowboys, you, you talk about the Cowboys like, yeah. They're lucky to sneak in the playoffs. They've lost four times this year. Hold on. Let's talk about those losses, though. First loss, first game of the year. Bad game. Poorly played. Their quarterback also broke Long his thumb. Long time ago. Well, second late loss. In the game. I, mean, second, oh, I understand. The, the second loss was with their backup quarterback against the current number one seed. Since Dak has been back, they have lost twice. Both games in overtime. Once to arguably the most talented quarterback ever, and the other to Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Well, I'm just telling you. I mean, I mean it's just what it was. It was to the Prince and Aaron Rodgers. I'm just telling you. So, they have, since Dak's Shot been back, bro, they've lost <laughs> two times, both in overtime, both against teams that are currently alive for the postseason. So, wh th this dysfunction you're describing, I, I, I understand okay. they are messy. I agree mm -hmm. with that. But they are a high-scoring team mm -hmm. with a potent defense that can has can some. I can I stop down on the potent defense? Yeah. Can we show the graphic? Because we keep saying potent are... defense because there's this idea in our head Ooh. that mighty Dan Quinn has this defense run cooking on all cylinders. Yeah. Daniel, these are not. not good. With all Hold due on. respect. Three hundred total. Is that passing yards or total yards? That's passing. That's total yards, right? Opponent yards, 300 yards is a that good game. That might mess up your Wild's graphics. No, so no. Look, Go ahead. regardless, these are a lot of yards. <laughs> yeah. No, the other one, Trayvon Diggs. I know he's supposed to come up with the ball. Trayvon Diggs has gone nine weeks without an interception. Yeah. He's got three on the year. The last one was before Halloween. 
Yeah. Micah Parsons, who I know that we think that he's going to terrorize the quarterback. He's got one sack in his last five games. He's got five QB hits, so maybe those affected the game. Oh. But this idea that Dallas has this mighty defense I didn't say is mighty. more of an I... idea than when you actually the no, grind no, no. the whole team. I think the strength is actually their offense. Yeah. I think last year they were high scoring last offense year that in the was league. The too. This year they're a top. I, I understand and we that. saw what happened in the playoffs. I get it. I am not sitting here guaranteeing the Cowboys go on some long run. But you have been guaranteeing for months they won't. And what I'm saying is, I think, pardon me, this team's upside is incredibly high. That this team... That, now, haven't I said right, that? But, but the you, ceiling's as correct. high as anyone but, in the NFC. So, I don't know, but what I guess I don't understand is why you're so convinced they can't reach that for a couple of games. Well, a couple of games. Here's, here's what I'm convinced of. There is a 50-50 chance. When they step out on the field, when they come through the tunnel and get on the field... There's a 50% chance they might bring their F game. That that's what I'm that's what I'm going. I mean, and I know look, we don't have I know, that this year. I know that what? you you don't look at close wins over bad teams as a problem. Because I because that's what the Chiefs do. That's what every time. team so in the you, league that, does. Eh, that's my eh, point. Hold on, the Chiefs are arguably these, hold on, stop for a second. You look at these close games Bro, over bad everybody teams. has them. Uh, had Dallas has had a number of them And recently. Dallas has also scored 33 nothing in a fourth quarter against a team. Dallas yeah, has also Jeff blown, Saturday's okay, Indianapolis Okay, and they've also Colts. blown out the Vikings. So here's the thing. You, when you, of course, I don't look at close wins in the NFL as a bad thing because everybody has them. And if the argument is, oh, the Chiefs do it, this isn't an offense of the Chiefs. One could argue the Chiefs are the best team in football, and even they do it. For, the, for you to say half the time the Cowboys bring their F game, then how are they 12-4, and four, having missed their quarterback for a third of the games? If half the time they bring their F game, why have they not lost in regulation with their starting quarterback since week one? A little less, and half is a, a, a bit high, obviously. They're 12-4. and four. But you, you see, when I do this. Do what? When I say Tampa, when I point out all of Tampa's weaknesses. They don't have And then say they're does. going to win uh -huh. against Dallas yeah. in round yeah. one. I'm contradictory. I'm Mr. Inconsistency. But when Nick, oh, who's picking the Cowboys to lose much. in the first round, yes, however, gets up here and praises them, oh, because he's still, he's going to say to you, who, first when they of all, call me, you're going to say, Mr. Consistent. Uh, first it's of not, all, it's not I am only picking the Cowboys <laughs> to lose in the first round definitively if they're playing Tampa because Tampa's going to go on a very annoying playoff run. However, and it's rare this happens, Wilds, if my pick is wrong, what I am – adamant about is the winner of Cowboys Bucks is going to play in the conference championship game. If they can get past the magic of Tom Brady, they're going to beat who they play in round two, which will be almost assuredly Philadelphia. That I'm very confident in, and we'll see, listen, we'll see how I it plays you know out. Jalen won't be but I, but I, I think the Cowboys are being underrated on this okay. show. Head to Philly where the Eagles are 14-point favorites over a Giants team that should be resting plenty of guys. Not quite sure Who's going to be the QB? But this is video from today of Jalen Hurts. Hold on. I am a doctor. Let me check out how this is going. <laughs> Footwork seems good. That looks good to me. Uh, Nick, any reason for Jalen to play against the Giants? Yeah, uh, of course, all the reasons. First of all, do we all agree that the Eagles, maybe you guys aren't as down on the Eagles as I am, but do we all agree that the Eagles lose and they all of a sudden go from the one seed all year to the five seed and they're on the road the entirety of the playoffs? They're not making the Super Bowl. Eh, I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, so I Most guess we don't likely, all agree. Yeah. But I wouldn't say. I wouldn't you you wouldn't give them zero percent. Right. But we saw that. They scored ten points and they lost in large part because Gardner Minshew threw a pick six and the offense couldn't get off the ground. So there's one reason that Jalen should play. But even if we remove that from the equation, if you were to come to me and say, Here's the deal. I'm guaranteeing you the Niners and the Cowboys are losing this weekend. So you guys can lose and still be the one seed. Don't worry about it. I'd still play Jalen because he is if, – if they do get the one seed and he does not play this week, he will go more than a month without playing. And the most recent time he did play was his worst game of the year. How can I, anyone not think that is a recipe for disaster? Your quarterback who looked like a potential league MVP yep. – plays one terrible game, then doesn't play for a month, and then he's back in the playoffs where his only memories are playing terribly. Like, of course it's a bad idea for him not to play until the postseason. Of course it is. What do you think? 
I think he should. I think he should rest. I think he what? should be healthy. He shouldn't play. No, he should. First, here's what I think: the 49ers are winning with Brock Purdy. The Cowboys are in the position they're in because Cooper Rush won them a bunch of games. So Nick Sirianni, if you want to be in Coach of the Year conversations, win a game with Gardner Minshew against the Giants' JV team. Is that too much to ask? And give Jalen some time. 